Uh, today I've got a very weird case for you involving a man keeping his grinder dates in a dungeon and the eventual eating of testicles. This is the story of Mark Latunsky, a man living near Lansing, Michigan, who has a creepy history of various naked men fleeing from his homemade dungeon in the middle of the night. Now, from what most people could see, Mark Latunsky was a very intelligent man, a very well-off man. Uh, he was married, he was a father of four, he was making a lot of money, and he was doing really well for himself. Latunsky actually attended Central Michigan University from the late 80s to the mid 90s and graduated with a master's in chemistry in 1995 from Iowa State University. Uh, however, early on he began to show signs of being a little, little bit eccentric. In the mid 90s he decided to sue the city of Ames claiming that a $1 storm sewer charge was unconstitutional. Uh, he lost that suit, by the way. But not too long after, he became a professional chemist, making money easily in the six figures, he got married, he started having kids. He married his now ex-wife Emily in 2001, and they and their four kids lived together in a house on Tyrell Road, kind of out in the country a bit, but a very nice area, a very big house. It was, it was nice. However, things soon became, uh, turbulent. Latunsky was diagnosed in 2010 and 2012 with a wide variety of mental disorders. Looking through past court cases in Shiawassee County, I found this will be the fifth time Latunsky has been court ordered to undergo testing and then treatment. We told you last week about a case in 2013 involving custody of his children. He was eventually ruled competent in that case. Before that, he was admitted to a Wausau Memorial stress unit as his then wife filed for divorce. In those records, we found a long history of mental health issues. Back in 2010, Latensky was also admitted to that same unit for depression with a diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia and borderline personality traits. Uh, not one, not two, not three, not even four. Uh, more, more than that. Uh, these included chronic, severe, recurring, major depression with anxiety, an adjustment disorder, uh, psychotic features, borderline personality disorder, just a lot. And it, it kind of varied depending on which doctor had examined him the most recently, but... You get the idea, I'm sure. The problem was that, although his condition was very manageable with medication, according to his wife, he stopped taking it. He just refused to take his medication after that point. This led to a very messy divorce in which a lot came to light about the situation in the Latinsky home. Uh, according to his wife, he began to watch a whole lot of violent, gory horror movies, usually the, the torture variety, which, you know, isn't an indicator of a problem on its own, but it is this time. He would talk to himself at all hours of the day, and soon all hours of the night as well. He began staying up all night. Uh, he would leave early in the morning and come back with no explanation of where he had been, which was uh, alarming. He stopped showering, he stopped shaving entirely, he just, he really let himself go, and it was about at this point when he started to act not so great around his kids. Uh, for some reason his paranoia got to him and he started believing that his son was not biologically his, which he had not he had never even considered before this. Uh, after this, he began to be cruel to the kids as well, uh, going as far as threatening to get rid of the family pets if they didn't behave. Uh, the divorce was finalized, and after that, things didn't really get much better. 
Uh, he began to technically kidnap his kids by violating custody agreements, keeping them out too long, going too far away with them, things like that. Uh, when his wife and kids would come over, he began physically preventing them from leaving the home, uh, which became a recurring issue. He began to make bogus claims to Child Protective Services, including that his ex-wife and her brother were trying to kill him uh, by poisoning his well, which would probably be a cool movie on its own if it was true, you know? Things began to get less divorcey and more insanity after that point. Uh, in 2013, he went to the police with an interesting claim that he killed Mark Latunsky. Being Mark Latunsky, of course. He claimed that he was a man named William Gregory Dean and that he had killed Mark Latunsky uh, with the stroke of a pen. It's uh, not really very clear what he meant by that. I'm almost wondering if it was kind of metaphorical, like he changed his name on paper, so therefore he was killing him with the stroke of a pen. Or uh, he, he might have just literally killed him with a pen. I, I don't know what he was implying. Later on, police were called to find him at his father's home, uh, laying down in the driveway, pretending to be either dead or unconscious. Soon after, he was fired from his job. He had claimed that his company was wanting him to put dangerous chemicals into their products, and he was this stand-up righteous guy who refused to do it. But in all reality, it was due to complications from him refusing to take his medication. I'm sure you're beginning to notice that things have been getting a little more alarming as things go on, but we're about to have a big jump and it's about to get really alarming. In October of 2019, there was a phone call. A businessman from New York, here on business, made a call to the police. I'm sorry, what's that? I'm trying to escape from some guy who had me chained up in his basement. Uh, the anonymous man met Latunsky at the bus stop right when he got there, presumably. And I was supposed to meet him at the bus station. I met this guy. I'm by. He was cute. He hit on me. I know. We went out to the car. We talked. Uh, we went to the store. I had a soda. I woke up in the basement. Okay. He obviously drugged me. And they really hit it off. They were having a great time. They seemed really compatible. And the man agreed to go back with Latunsky to his home for a conversation. I never ever had anything like this happen. I don't know whether he drugged me. I don't know. Details beyond that point are largely unknown until the man woke up chained in his basement. I woke up in the basement, okay? Chained in the basement with a leather thing on my an ankle and I cut it with the butcher knife that I have in my freaking hand, excuse my French. I just want to get out of here and I want to go home. I don't even care about the legal case I was here for. I'm sorry, I can't help them. I want to go home. Okay. I don't, I don't want an incident report. Uh, I just really need a ride. Get out of here, please. The guy, he, he just wanted to go home. He wasn't in the mood for a lengthy process. He wasn't about pressing charges. He just wanted it to be over and done. Which is what he said. But strangely enough, he made up with Latinsky. They both together went back to his home and he actually stayed for a couple more days. This was not the only time a mostly naked man was found fleeing from Latunsky's house in the middle of the night. Just the next month, a man wearing only a leather kilt showed up covered in blood to Latunsky's neighbor's home, pounding on the door. I hear a pounding at my door at four in the afternoon, and I jump up, my dogs are barking like you probably hear, and this kid has this his face covered with a rag and a phone to his ear and he's like help me help me he's after me he's after me just scared to death out of his mind this scene played out on park's front porch 
a gentleman pulls up in my driveway in a silver SUV, and he gets out, and he's wearing the same getup this guy's wearing, which is a leather skirt and a couple of belts crossing her body, no shoes on, no shirt on, it's 40 degrees out. Park tells TV5 that the man was Mark Latunsky. He says Latunsky was trying to, quote, calm the situation down, saying it was a misunderstanding, but says the victim's reaction told a different story. This kid grabs my arm and clutches behind me. <gasps> keep him away from me, keep him away from me. Just scared out of his mind. That's when Latunsky left and police arrived. Yeah, Latunsky actually showed up at that neighbor's house during all of this and claimed to him that it was a misunderstanding, it was just a lover's quarrel. Uh, he was mainly only chasing him down to get back his $300 kilt. However, again, this man also refused to press charges. Uh, giving that there was no victim and it was all claimed to be a big misunderstanding, technically no crime had taken place, leaving the police with very little they could do about it. Police fear that the issue might be that a lot of members of the gay community are not ready to come out of the closet in this sort of fashion, and that also a lot of members in the bondage community don't really like to, uh, make public what they do. But it's because of these things that the police worry that there could be a lot more cases out there just like this that we just don't know about. Police were called to Latunsky's home numerous times going back to 2013. Lieutenant Kaiser says they were visiting the two most recent calls. Those are um, things that we are recontacting those people, putting the embarrassment aside now that this is out in the open to make sure there's no additional things that happened that maybe were inappropriate or illegal that now they'd wish to talk about. So let's review up to this point. So we've got at least five mental disorders. We've got two naked men fleeing from his house in the middle of the night. We have a purported child abuse. We have that whole ordeal where he pretended to be another guy who killed Latunsky, there's a lot on his plate already. Uh, th this leads us to the main ordeal, and uh, you saw the title of the video? Here we have the case of Kevin Bacon, a 25-year-old hairstylist. Uh, he met Mark Latunsky on Grindr, the, pretty much the LGBT version of Tinder. Sometime on or before Christmas Eve of 2019, the two met on Grinder started conversing, and they were hitting it off pretty well, actually. Uh, that night, Kevin told his roommate that he was going on a date with Latunsky, and all seemed pretty normal. Even later that night, he texted another friend saying that he was having a great time, so things are going good, seemingly. Until the next day when he didn't show up for his family's traditional Christmas breakfast. Uh, given that this was so unlike him, uh, his parents, of course, tried to contact him, and once they couldn't contact him, they contacted the police instead. Uh, not too long after, his car was found outside of a family dollar store, and inside the car was his wallet, a change of clothes, and his phone. And that phone would prove to have everything that the cops needed to know. State police tell me the information found on the Grinder dating app led them to the body of 25-year-old Kevin Bacon three days after Christmas. They found Bacon's cell phone in his car outside of a Dollar General. We were able to go back and extract the conversations that he had between him and Mr. Latunsky, and that's what led us to this house. That is how we found Mr. Bacon. If we hadn't found that phone, who knows if we'd have ever found him. Early on the day of the 28th, the cops predictably found Kevin Bacon's body inside Latunsky's home. They had found his body hanging upside down from the rafters in his basement dungeon. Uh, Latunsky claimed that he had killed Bacon with a literal stab to the back, followed by the slicing of his throat. He then proceeded to cut out his testicles with a knife, fry them up, and eat them. He was very promptly arrested. Now, the neighbors were understandably shocked 
Uh, one neighbor reportedly had actually called the police on Latunsky before, believing that he was up to something. He wasn't sure what, but he knew something had to be going on. He never thought it would be of this magnitude. Uh, according to the Washington Post, that's nasty, said one neighbor of Latunsky's. In good Latunsky fashion, upon being arrested, Mark Latunsky claimed that he wasn't who the police thought he was. He was Edgar Thomas Hill, a wealthy man from a elite Welsh family named the Thomas clan. Sir, are you Mr. Latunsky? Uh, no, my name is Edgar Thomas Hill. Sir, Mark Latunsky is my nephew. It might just sound like a lot of bullshit, but according to his court-appointed attorney, he genuinely seemed to believe this. He believes he's named someone else. He believes he is from a royal family, family out of Wales, Thomas clan. Um, and just the nature of the crime itself, uh, you've got to send him for this evaluation. In two to three months, Latunsky will be sent to the forensic center in Saline for a competency test. He'll stay there until psychologists believe he's able to understand what's happening in court. There is no statute of limitations on open murder charges. They would have to find him not to be a danger to release. They'll also take into account his past hospitalizations. Court records show he was found incompetent to stand trial in 2014 when he was charged with kidnapping two of his four children. Uh, eventually, Latunsky claimed that he was not guilty by reason of insanity, a claim that was not entirely baseless. I've heard bits and pieces about that there was a lot of um, psychological disorders. I don't know a whole lot about everything, but it sounds like it's just the whole mess. He was ordered to undergo several psychiatric evaluations to determine his competency. The attorney representing Latunsky says the accused murderer will remain at the jail for the next two months before he's tested. He'll eventually go to the Center for Forensic Psychology where they will analyze if he's currently sane. If he is found competent, they'll then test if Latunsky was sane at the time he allegedly killed Kevin Bacon. He failed all of them. Over the course of the next 15 months, he was ordered to go through therapy, evaluations, medications, all in order to bring him back to a point of competency to stand trial. However, things were a little off from the very beginning. After being sent to jail, about five days later, he was found unresponsive in his jail cell. It turns out that he hadn't eaten in five days uh, ever, ever since he arrived at the jailhouse. Uh, as with most of the things he does, his motivations were not entirely clear. They have confirmed that it was not a hunger strike, though. Uh, Kevin's family was understandably devastated. I'm all over, yeah. sick to my stomach. Yeah. And I just want him punished for everything he did. Uh, it seems that they weren't really aware of uh, what he was into. Police believe that Kevin knew he was meeting someone with violent fantasies, uh, but he assumed that's all they were, fantasies. He never really got the vibe that Latunsky was actually capable of something like this. He was essentially just in way over his head. Back in Flint, Michigan, his family and loved ones painted the Flint Rock in his honor. Cases like this are always tough. Given the literal insanity of the criminal, who do you blame? Uh, you could blame the man himself, of course, but he didn't really have any sort of idea of what he was actually doing. Uh, you could blame the people around him for failing to do anything about his very obvious insanity issues. Some people want to blame the system, they want to blame the police for not having done anything in the previous cases. 
some people even want to blame the previous victims who ran from his home and chose not to press charges. But it's all very muddy. It's hard to really find one particular person or persons to blame for this. It's just horrible. Uh, thanks for watching my channel, everybody. Uh, this is actually the first recording I've done for this channel. Uh, the, the first one I decided to upload <laughs> anyway. Uh, hopefully you'll come back here. I'll make a lot more videos, probably every week or so at the least. And I've got a lot of interesting cases to go over. I'll see you next time. Take care.